Uh, my name is Simon. Uh, I'm taking the AO route. Uh, I'm a secondary school teacher. I teach English literature uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to finally getting my qualified teacher status. I think the main reason is I've been teaching for nearly five years at secondary level and I don't have an official qualification for, for what I do. And I feel with the amount of effort I put into to my teaching, this is the career I want to pursue in teaching and learning and, and education, that there was a, a feeling that not having a proper qualification to, to do it was just didn't feel quite right. I felt like I needed that backbone to say, yes, I'm, uh, I'm a qualified teacher. This is what I do. This is what I will be doing. This is what I love doing. And so having that qualification felt like it was important to me and to know that my experience was not just contained to the one school that has employed me without having a teaching qualification, uh, especially I think during the pandemic where we saw that things can change so quickly uh, and so unexpectedly. So as to make sure that I, that I would know that the experience I have here would combine with a qualified teacher's uh, qualification with QTS so that it could be used elsewhere, should that be necessary. Well, I think for the school, because it makes teachers mindful of what they're doing. So by having to think, okay, how am I matching these standards? How am I showing evidence of these standards? We're being forced to think, okay, yeah, well, am I doing what I should be doing? Or am I just, you know, am I planning purposefully to match with the standards? Am I aware of differentiation? Am I doing these things in my classroom management? And I think that's a benefit to me as a teacher and of course to my school, because by doing so, it, it involves more mindful planning, more awareness of what I'm doing, and then being able to say to myself at the end of the class, okay, did I fulfill those teacher standards or are there areas where I'm still falling a little bit short? And so I think that's mutually benefit, beneficial to students, to teachers and to the school in, in general as well. A lot of the, the evidence I have includes examples of my schemes of work and um, activities that I've done in order to try and reinforce learning. Uh, so, you know, we've maybe we've worked through uh, an act of the play or a section of the play, Antigone by Sophocles, uh, and something I've given evidence of is an activity we did at the end of that, which was to, to create something called pop sonnets, which was using uh, using a poetic form, but creating their own, their own version of poetry related to that play. So, you know, an activity where I felt like I've tested multiple skills in a collaborative way and those sorts of things, which I think hit a lot of the standards. Uh, observation reports as well, where where my observers have shown me to be to be hitting certain standards. Uh, lesson plans, meetings with my with my department where we've discussed things related to curriculum, um, and testimonials from my from my, from my superiors, testimonials from parents as well, uh, and also evidence of where I've flagged up student concerns to the well-being team, so issues that have have uh, have arisen due to the overall well-being or relating to the overall well-being of students. Uh, I've uh, I've redacted, of course, and, uh, and and shared them in in folder. So those are those are the main things, I think, really. Probably the the easiest way to demonstrate it is through the observation reports, um, because. The advantage with the observation reports is to be able to speak to the observer before and say, you know, discuss with them what, what area is it that I feel that I'm not quite demonstrating enough. So for me, one, one of the issues that not just for the AO, but for, for teaching in general, what I really want to work on is differentiation. Um, so to be able to say to the, the person observing me, you know, please give all your, your general feedback and everything that, that needs to go into form. But one thing I would particularly like you to, to look out for me are any efforts you see me making towards differentiation, what you think might be working with that, what I could do better at in order to really encompass the individual needs of each learner in the room uh, and then get that feedback on, on that. So it's useful for me as a, as a teacher as well. Uh, and I would say that's probably the easiest way.
to demonstrate the 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 standards i think it's also because you know it's 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 written it's 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 a narrative thing it's it's just easy as well i imagine it's easier for my tutor for my examiner to see from that observation report exactly what's on it and judge from that how i'm how i'm meeting the standards or otherwise whereas the other the other things like the schemes of work or the lesson activities maybe requires a little bit more inference because they're not actually in that class they haven't seen that class being delivered so they have to accept that my instruction of it or my my guiding my pacing transfers into a lesson that delivers those those standards so i think they all can do a bit but the easiest are probably the observation reports so i think the ao is is a great program it's really useful for for people in a similar position to myself who have some experience uh, and want to get that qualification for for their own personal and professional development but would just strongly encourage people applying to make sure they do have the time required uh, before getting into the assessment period to gather the evidence and really think about what they can provide to to show that they're meeting those standards